over the years, Shadow of the Colossus has only gotten better with age. It's an experience like no other that was made near the end of one of the greatest eras in gaming. Now that Bluepoint Games has remade Shadow of the Colossus on the PS4, it's finally relevant to the current generation. Bluepoint created the mostly solid remaster of Shadow of the Colossus, and they seem quite reliable. My greatest concern about the remake is in terms of how they'll alter the scenes and the atmosphere. Any changes to the game will be how the modern player will see the title. I saw the trailers for the remake during E3 2017 and I was genuinely happy to see my favorite Team Ico game return to the spotlight. Later on, I did notice the stylistic differences in the scenery as well as Wander's uncharacteristic facial expression. It got me concerned about the quality of the remake so I decided to review the game. I've already seen people hailing the game as the definitive version, despite the clear changes in artistry. I feel that it's important to provide context for where I'm coming from. It's a strange experience seeing one of your favorite games getting remade with a contribution from the original team. I'm rather conflicted on how I want it to turn out. I want the game to remain true to the original vision, but I don't want the game to surpass the original, thereby overriding the past iteration. Without Team Ico's supervision, the game can't be the same as the original masterpiece. I'm hesitant, but I'd certainly accept this to be the definitive edition of Shadow of the Colossus if it manages to truly fix the issues the original had while maintaining the essence of what made it so great. The footage you see in the video is from the regular PS4 model. Shadow of the Colossus is a masterclass title in the action-adventure genre while also being one of the best art games of its generation. It manages to evoke feelings of sadness, mystery, and adventure in a simple yet effective manner. The game carries heavy themes of sacrifice, devotion, and perseverance in its minimalist story. There's a distinct lack of detail in the story in order to allow the player to fill in the blanks themselves. You play as Wander, a young man trying to find a way to revive a girl named Mono. Wander makes a deal with the formless entity named Dorman. It promises to revive Mono, but in exchange, Wander has to hunt down 16 colossi spread throughout the land. The light from Wander's ancient sword guides the player to each colossus. The player also has with them a bow and the beautiful black horse, Agro. The story is set up in a way that makes you question the decisions of the protagonist. Slaying majestic creatures at the request of a formless entity in a temple certainly feels wrong after a while. Killing each colossus results in what seems to be shadow energy seeping into our main character. It seems to have some Faustian elements woven into the story. Wander's desperation to save Mono is the core drive of the narrative. We don't know much about their relationship, but we definitely know how far he's willing to go for her. The lengths that he's willing to go for her are naturally presented in the gameplay. For such a simple story, it managed to impress me in its beauty and get me emotionally invested in the characters. Details aren't everything. I don't feel the need for everything to be explained in a game. Details can effectively ruin a story just as well as they can improve one. Allowing the viewer to interpret parts of the story can also be a double-edged sword. There are games with too little detail and games with too much detail, but Shadow of the Colossus manages to strike a perfect balance. It maintains an excellent story structure while being vague in areas that can provide flexibility to players. The remake tells the story mostly the same, but Wander's few facial expressions have changed. A small detail I like in the game is how each time you kill a Colossus, another shadow surrounds Wander while another dove surrounds Mono. The game's story is inherently tied to the gameplay in a way that provides context to the actions of our protagonist. The gameplay can be simply explained as a boss rush, but with some wandering around to pad it out. However, it's much more than that. The traveling provides a sense of exploration that many games lack. This manages to synergize well with the boss fights, as traveling provides the player with some breathing room between battles. Boss fights are usually tense encounters that are all about momentum. The music informs the player of who has the momentum at each and every moment. Audio shifts naturally between songs depending on the situation. The game has the highest highs I've ever seen in a game. When you have the momentum, you really feel like you're achieving something great. However, these highs come at the cost of very low lows. It works out well in the end, but it may drive your patience at times, especially on hard mode. It's a game where you really have to put in the effort in order to beat it. Every boss feels like a unique puzzle. This keeps the game interesting, as it manages to provide superb challenges that force the player to be aware of their environment as well as the tools they have at their disposal. The game has two layers to the gameplay, 
the action layer, and the puzzle layer. There's challenge in figuring out how to tackle the colossi, as well as the challenge in actually pulling off your plan. The two halves add up into an excellent whole. Combat consists of scaling the boss and finding out the right time to stab the glowing tattoos. That's the main source of applying damage. It's also where the puzzle half meets the combat half. Figuring out how to get there is just as important as managing to physically reach the weak points. Some of the colossi have shadowy marks that trigger different events when you stab them. Originally, they were black, but now they're red for some reason. I prefer how they were, as red doesn't match most of the colossi designs. The game's minimalist design does potentially provide problems for players not familiar with the lack of handholding. There were times in the original game where I'd have problems beating a boss because the solution was something I didn't even think was possible. However, I didn't have a full grasp of my toolset at the time. Even now, I just recently found out about the jump stab move. My advice for new players is to get comfortable with the controls and items. There were moments where I'd get frustrated by the boss fights. Some bosses require quite a lengthy setup period in order to shift the momentum back to the player. For example, one of the bosses has a sword you have to climb up on, but in order to climb the sword, the Colossus has to do an overhead swing with the sword. There was a strange situation where the Colossus would no longer use the overhead attack. It quickly got tedious waiting on the Colossus. Stamina management is exciting in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. You'll try your best to stay on the Colossus by making sure you have enough stamina to hold on. Then you'd try to regain your stamina on the more stable parts of the Colossus. Climbing in Shadow of the Colossus was rather unique. Now, it seems like Breath of the Wild has taken inspiration from Shadow of the Colossus with its climbing mechanic. There's a grip gauge tied to how long you can hold on. The gauge's color has changed from a light pink to an aesthetically awful yellow. It's no longer just a simple circle either, it's a circle of a tail. Functionally, it's an objective improvement as spotting stamina progression is clearer and it takes up less space. However, it looks tacky and it lacks the unique charm of the original. The grip gauge can be extended through eating lizard tails. Killing lizards in the remake is easier than in the original because aiming feels more accurate. There's a health gauge that regenerates slowly, which makes sense as figuring out how to climb the Colossus requires a little trial and error. The health gauge can be increased by eating fruit from special trees. Essentially, Wander gets stronger through the very act of exploration. In this version of the game, it feels like the Colossi do less damage while the health regenerates slower. The world is huge but barren. There's little to do besides gathering collectibles, fruit, and lizard tails. The light from the sword acts as a minimalist way of providing the player with a sense of direction. It may lead the player down the wrong path at times, but that merely adds more to the explorative experience. I dislike how the sword's light is usually now blue, as well as how it makes the rest of the screen dark. Regardless, it's merely a stylistic preference. The game's controls are unconventional. They take a little getting used to, but they're unconventional controls for an unconventional game. I had no interest in playing with the new remake controls. I'm glad to say that the classic controls seem to be the same as they were before. People complain about jumping with the triangle button, but I don't really think we need all control schemes to be exactly the same. Personally, learning new controls is usually not a problem. To hold on to Colossi, the grip button has to be held down. This works effectively as you'll eventually get a good sense of when to hold on and when to let go. It also does a good job at getting you invested during the tense moments. Stabbing is done with a toggle, and it's a simple yet well executed risk versus reward system. Charging up longer deals more damage, but opens up the possibility of the Colossus interrupting your balance, resulting in you losing all of your charge. This is tied to the grip gauge, as you usually have to cling on to part of the Colossus while stabbing. Oftentimes, the Colossi will have weak points in areas that require you to hold on to their fur. It all adds up into a system that ties fun risk versus reward action with tense stamina management. It really went all out on the action side of the game. It's very satisfying to stab a Colossus at full force. The game's gameplay systems are layered in such a way that their synergy really do add to a greater whole. Beyond gameplay, the presentation manages to bring the experience to the next level. As you've been watching, Wander climbs his way on top of colossal enemies. It's quite a spectacle that has yet to be pulled off in any other game as it has been here. The game's visual fidelity has gone way beyond the original, 
as well as the remaster due to technological advancements in hardware. However, I was somewhat sad to see the game was missing that dreamlike quality that the original had in spades. It added to the traveling aspect as it felt like a hypnotic daze. The lighting has also been toned down. The original's almost excessive lighting seemed to be linked to the game's heavy focus on light and dark motifs. There's an extreme contrast in lighting in the original, which has been completely lost on the remake. The remake aims for realistic lighting, which has been done well on a technical level. I just like the direction they took on the character models, though mainly just Wander. His face seems off to me here, and I prefer how determined he looked in the original. Regardless, the realism is done well. It was great to see so much detail on the Colossi. In the aesthetic department, I very much prefer the original. Be it my nostalgia, my preference for dreamlike environments, or my obsession with the strange, the original vision for Shadow of the Colossus wins me over even now. Regardless, the remake has way more freedom in its visuals due to the addition of the filter feature. You can add all sorts of filters to the game in order to add another layer of flavor to the mix. Ever wanted to travel at night? There's a night filter. Want to make things look closer to the original? Consider using the brightness filter or the faded filter. It's a great addition to an already amazing game. One of my favorite things about the remake is the simple addition of the autosave feature. It's a fantastic feature that streamlines the experience. It does make the shrines feel a lot more useless, but it's worth it for the sake of convenience. The game makes skipping cutscenes more difficult. You have to either hold down the X button or press the options button and select skip cinematic. I like it for the most part, but it makes even skipping the opening scene a bit of a hassle. I didn't notice the X button skip until I had already beaten the game. In this iteration of the game, the achievements pop up right after defeating each boss. In the PS3 remaster, they would appear during the transition scene when teleporting back to base. It seems to be more of a tone breaker this time. The sadness of slaying a colossus is now awkwardly juxtaposed with a cheesy notification. Sure, it's only for the first playthrough, but it's the playthrough that matters the most. Speaking of which, I prefer the transition scene in the original more than in the remake. Its simplicity once again wins me over. The game also has a photo mode. It's a decent addition that's been featured in many modern games, but it failed to grab my interest. I only used it once or twice. Surprisingly, I only ran into a single glitch during my playthrough and a half. It wasn't too bad, but it broke my immersion nonetheless. The camera seems to be around the same as I remember it being in the previous iterations. It worked, but it had a couple of hiccups that were slight annoyances. This is most likely due to how hard it is to account for moving buildings like most of the Colossi. Regardless, the game's camera never became a real issue for me. The remake replaces the original title screen with a more focused shot of the temple. It transitions nicely into the first screen of Wander entering the temple, but I honestly preferred how the original provided the beautiful landscape shot of the temple as well as the bridge connecting it to the outside world. The feelings they evoke are different as the remakes feels a little more daunting, like there's a challenge ahead. The original feels more like it's trying to show you that there's a beautiful world to explore and it's just waiting for you to see what's out there. The remake really hones in on the level of detail they were able to achieve while the original is more interested in showing you the beauty of the open world. Again, it's a matter of personal preference. In terms of audio, Shadow of the Colossus is spectacular. Its soundtrack is full of memorable and compelling tracks. These tracks complement the gameplay in an incredible way. They add so much to the emotional weight in every situation. There are times it felt beautiful, other times it would ramp up the sense of danger, and then there'd also be tracks that evoked a sense of achievement. It's up there with the best video game soundtracks for me. The soundtrack is worth listening to even on its own. It's just that good. Master composer Ko Otani deserves massive props for his contributions to the game. As for the sound effects, they're effective as they successfully convey most actions accurately. I enjoyed playing the remake of Shadow of the Colossus as much as I enjoyed the original and the remaster. The remake doesn't deviate far enough to be a disappointment to the franchise. It's a great remake, but it just doesn't replace the original for me. The gameplay is smooth and feels just as good as before. They even fixed the charge jumps ledge grabbing. Before, you'd have to release the grab button between jumps to grab the higher ledges. Now, it just automatically grabs to the highest ledge. It was definitely an issue worth fixing. 
However, I just like how they added a dropping penalty for trying to grab ledges that are too far for Wander to handle. It's not too bad, but it did kill me the first time it happened to me. Despite all the technicalities, it still plays well, and I enjoyed the remake as a whole. The music feels exactly the same, and the additional features are pretty nice. It's a remake with a lot going for it. I wouldn't be all that surprised if this did end up becoming the definitive edition for most people. Overall, the Shadow of the Colossus remake remains true to the original, for the most part. The elements that make up Shadow of the Colossus all work in conjunction in order to create a masterpiece unlike any other. However, the remake lacks the aesthetic style of the original, and I still dislike the changes in Water's facial expression. This prevents it from replacing the original for me. Despite that personal preference, I can't deny that it has a lot going for it. It easily has mainstream appeal due to the graphical prowess and accessibility in the form of its modern control option. The game still has masterpiece qualities, but it's not my Shadow of the Colossus of choice. It's more like an imitation of a masterpiece. It's structured in the same way, with many of the same qualities, but it's somehow still possible to tell the difference between the fake and the genuine article. Thanks for watching my lengthy review on Shadow of the Colossus. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like the video and consider subscribing to my channel for more. If you want more, you should check out my videos on the Beginner's Guide and Bound. See you all next time.